Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at the Vivitar AeroView GPS drone. This is a Wi-Fi streaming HD video drone with plenty of automated and GPS features such as waypoints, orbit mode, follow me, return to home, headless mode, auto takeoff, auto land, and more. So let's check it out. Now the drone comes in this large white rectangular box showing the drone clearly there in the front with its propeller guards on. And this is the Vivitar AeroView video drone with GPS follow me technology for ages 14 plus. And here on the side you can see a listing of some of its features such as auto hover or altitude hold, Wi-Fi app control, GPS, follow me, one key return or return to home, HD camera, so on and so forth. So plenty of neat features packed in. And right here on the side, you can see some more of its features listed out, such as the six axis gyro, uh, auto trim, headless mode, so on and so forth. So a lot of neat features with this package. And here in the back, you can see another perspective of the drone along with its transmitter and you have more descriptions and details there uh, such as the thousand foot flight range and 10 minute flight time so uh, more details there and also that its app is in both the iOS and Android app stores in Google Play and Apple and here on the side you just simply have a view of a guy flying the drone there so uh, pretty neat uh, layout and package so now let's open it up and check out what's inside here. We'll just open these uh, flaps here and then open the top of the box here. And let's pull out the uh, styrofoam portion right inside. Now taking out the styrofoam here, we'll start out here with the instruction manuals and brochures right here in this plastic package. We have QR codes and customer support booklets and materials, so very good there. And then here in the center of the package, you can see everything nice and neatly laid out. You can see the drone and its accessories, so very cool. Here's the drone here, and nothing has been installed, so it doesn't have its uh, landing legs or... Uh, a camera or battery or anything on it it's just in its plain form and it says Vivitar and it has a pretty good construction and uh, pretty nice little quadcopter uh, this is a SEMA uh, X8 variant or clone so pretty cool and we'll just set that right there and now here looking at this little bag here of goodies and accessories we have two spare propellers the uh, usb charge cable or mini balance charger screwdriver some screws um, typical things there and then here we have um, the landing legs here so they have to be installed and uh, there's several screws so you just simply apply two screws per each landing leg underneath the quadcopter Here's the mobile device mount that you place on the transmitter towards the top and it's uh, pretty spacious there for a mobile device. Here is the battery for the drone. It's a 7.4 volt 2000 milliamp LiPo battery and this package even comes with four AA batteries for the transmitter so that's kind of interesting. Pretty cool. And here are the four propeller guards. They're pretty large and uh, you just simply snap them on to the sides. Here's the camera module. It's an HD camera module with uh, some dampers there at the top and a power cable to power on the um, camera. And it is not a remote tilting uh, camera. It's a manually tilting camera. And right here underneath the styrofoam we have the transmitter itself. So we'll just simply pull that out and uh, it's quite an interesting little transmitter or actually a fairly large transmitter um, it has these folding antennas that are purely just for looks they don't seem like they're uh, legit and here in the back they have some comfortable grips 
and uh, overall a pretty interesting transmitter so we'll just set that there and now let's organize all this and take one last look at the contents of the box now taking a last look at the contents of the box we have the drone itself it's four propeller guards four landing legs four AA batteries for the transmitter a 7.4 volt 2000 milliamp lipo battery for the drone two spare propellers a screwdriver a small bag of screws a small usb balance charger the camera module a mobile device mount for the transmitter the transmitter and the instruction manuals and customer brochures so that's essentially the contents of the box now let's take a closer look at the drone now taking a closer look at the drone this is a pretty standard looking drone that somewhat resembles a dji phantom but is actually a sema x8 variant or clone and right here at the top it says vivitar in red and it's made out of a strong sturdy plastic so good construction there and it is a brushed motor quadcopter and the uh, propeller guards are very easy to snap on and off so you may have to apply a little pressure to either insert or remove these large propeller guards but overall they do a good job protecting the drone and its surroundings now down here below we have the drone's camera module which plugs directly to the bottom of the drone to power it on and it has a mount and dampeners and it is a manually tilting camera it does not remote tilt and it does not take an SD card. All the footage is streamed directly to it. And supposedly it's a 720p HD camera, but the quality really isn't very good. And in fact, this one came with a defect out of the factory where the lens is slightly tilted to the side. And so the quality of the camera is not that great, but fortunately it is a modular component that you can simply remove. And the bottom of the quadcopter has a very simple style of clickable mount. And so right here we have a Bugs 3 uh, mount, camera mount. And you can simply slide it in and clip it in. Since this uses the uh, SEMA X8 or Bayang X16 or the Bugs 3 style of mounting, which many quadcopters have. And so you can simply clip in this camera mount here. So you can put in an action camera and um, it's very simple. You just slide it in there and snap it in place and then you can just simply open it up here and you can put in an action camera. Uh, right here we'll use a Firefly 8S and um, in fact Vivitar has their own action camera so you can put one of those in there or a GoPro or any other style of uh, action camera and as you can see um, now we have a better option here for filming footage and in fact this mount is leaning towards the front so you won't get any legs or propellers in the shot hopefully and so um, this is a good option to look into because the quadcopter is a very good capable quadcopter only that the camera is not too great but there are several options another option is you can use a different style of camera here we have a firefly q6 and you can use a run cam or a mobius um, any type of flat style action camera like this and you can use velcro straps and just simply put it right there underneath the quadcopter and you can film in 1080p uh, and in fact maybe even in 4k so this is another option to consider and another style of camera that you can also put on this that is also very inexpensive is using something like this which is a firefly micro and this is a small 1080p camera that goes for about 20 dollars or so and so you can also velcro it to the bottom um, you can put it in the front of the quadcopter like this and in fact you can even probably put it on the top so um, you know you have several options with that and so these are uh, good things to consider now going back to the bottom of the quadcopter you do have to install these uh, landing legs right here 
There are four of them and you do have to apply two screws each to make sure that they're properly attached to the bottom of the drone. And right here in the bottom of the drone, we have the um, on off switch and we have the two power connections or outlets. And as you can see, they're very bright LEDs underneath the drone and you can see them from just about every angle. So very good for orientation or an early evening flight. And now looking at the rear of the quadcopter, we have the battery bay, which is a pretty substantial battery bay here. And it's very easy to open and pulling out the battery here, it does take a 7.4 volt, 2000 milliamp LiPo battery. And this battery provides the quadcopter with around a 10 minute flight time. And these are very common batteries. Um, these are the same batteries used in the SEMA X8C with this standard connection here. So these are very easy to find. These are also used by the Promark Warrior drones and uh, other kind of uh, similar SEMA X8 quadcopters. So very easy to find and uh, very inexpensive. And now it comes with this small balance charger, um, a USB balance charger here. And so you would simply connect it right here and then the uh, USB portion has uh, some light indicators letting you know that the uh, quadcopter battery is being charged. But it is recommended to use a hobby grade type charger. Uh, something like a 20 watt B3 charger which we have right here. Here's the B3 Max 20 watt. And with this you can charge the battery in a lot less time within an hour or less and it's safer and more reliable and has um, clear indicators, LED indicators as to the charging of the battery. So um, this is definitely an upgrade from the included balance charger and you can get these very inexpensive um, online. So um, that's just a recommendation there for the battery. But overall, a, uh, a very uh, nifty quadcopter uh, it has an excellent GPS system, which uh, I believe probably has a GLONASS chip because it grabs satellites very quickly and even indoors. Um, but unfortunately, the biggest downside is the camera as the quality is not too good and the FPV range is not that great. So now let's take a closer look at the transmitter. Now taking a closer look at the transmitter, this is a somewhat large yet comfortable transmitter and it is well labeled and right here in the back it takes four AA batteries as you can see right here, four AA batteries and in fact the package does come with its own four AA batteries so pretty good. And the uh, rear of the transmitter is kind of interesting. It has these uh, indentations here where you can simply wrap your hands around and grip the transmitter right here. And there are two buttons right there for auto takeoff and auto land that the user can simply push right there in the back of the transmitter. Now going over the controls, we have the on off button right here. And then we have the left throttle stick followed by the right rudder stick. And this button right here is the orbit button. So you would push that and you would move the rudder stick a certain distance to have the quadcopter move a certain radius of orbit. And right here we have the headless mode button so that front is always front and back is always back and so on. Here's the one key return or return to home button where once the lights go green and there's home lock, the quadcopter will return to its landing or takeoff point. And here are the speed or rates of speed buttons. We have the lowest at 30 or slow. We have the medium and then we have the high at 100%. And if you push the medium and high buttons at the same time and keep them pressed, that will be the emergency shutoff to have the quadcopter motor suddenly stop if necessary. And last but not least this is the compass calibration button. So you would press that to initiate the GPS compass calibration procedure where you would spin the quadcopter around uh, vertically and horizontally and that will calibrate it. Here are the folding antennas, but these antennas appear to be just for looks. They don't seem to be uh, legitimate antennas. 
and right here we have the mobile device mount and you do have to install it and screw it in and it does provide enough space for a large mobile device but not a tablet so that's essentially it for the uh, transmitter and once again here are the auto takeoff and auto land buttons and this transmitter does provide the quadcopter with around a thousand foot range of control so that's essentially it for the transmitter uh, now let's take a closer look at setting this up for a first time flight and its app now setting the drone up for its first time flight is very straightforward once you have a fully charged battery inserted into the drone along with fresh batteries inserted into the transmitter and its mobile device you would proceed to activate the drone by turning it on underneath with its on off switch so we'll simply grab the drone here and turn it on right here with its on off switch so once you turn it on you should see the lights start to blink at that point you need to bind the controller to the drone and so you would turn on the transmitter and then to bind it to the quadcopter you would move the left throttle stick up and down like so and once that's done now the controller is bound to the quadcopter and so you want to perform a couple of calibrations first you want to do the gyro calibration by moving both sticks down and to the left like so and you should see the lights start to blink and make sure this is done while the quadcopter is down at the ground level flat and not moving and so once your gyros are calibrated you want to calibrate the GPS compass and to do that you would simply push the GPS calibrate button on the upper right corner and once that's done you should see the lights start to blink and so you would rotate the quadcopter clockwise on its flat horizontal axis for about three or four spins until you see a couple of the lights start to go solid uh, I believe the red lights will go solid and so right here you should see the red lights go solid that indicates that um, rotation has been complete now you want to face the quadcopter downwards and rotate it clockwise for another three or four spins until the remaining blue lights go solid and right here you could see they went solid so that rotation is complete and so now it has been calibrated and you just simply have to wait till the lights go green and as you can see they went green almost immediately and as I mentioned earlier the GPS chip on this is excellent and it probably has GLONASS because it grabs satellites very quickly and even indoors and so it achieves home lock very quickly so that's one high point to this drone and so now let's connect to the drone's Wi-Fi so once in your mobile devices Wi-Fi settings you want to look for an entry that says Vivitar Sky Eye and it'll have a serial number. So you would simply connect to that. And initially there is no default Wi Fi password or anything like that. So you would connect to the Vivitar Sky Eye entry. And once that's done, you would want to download and launch this app right here, which is the Vivitar AeroView app with an icon of a drone. And it's in both the iOS and Android app stores. So once you go ahead and launch that, you will be greeted with this screen. And on the lower left corner, there's a little help icon here that'll give you the basic information on each of the icons and what they do. But you mainly want to launch this start. So you would go ahead and launch the start there. And right away, you should have a live feed with the drone. As you can see here, we have a live feed and it does have some latency it is a little uh, laggy but uh, it is somewhat clear and as i mentioned earlier uh, this model came with a small defect out of the factory where the camera lens is tilted to the side so you'll notice that it is at an angle and the fpv range on this is maybe somewhere around 80 to 100 meters um, so not too great um, now going over the app a little bit, we have the uh, home icon right here on the upper left corner. So that will take you back to the main screen. And as you can see, we have some telemetry across the top. 
as to um, vertical and horizontal speed and distance. Um, we have the uh, number of satellites, uh, latitude, longitude, roll and pitch, amount of voltage. Uh, we have some settings here, such as joystick settings. Um, we have some uh, waypoint parameter settings as to the uh, time and length uh, at each waypoint. We have some map settings, and we have the invert camera option right there. And then right here, this icon will enable the uh, GPS special features such as waypoints here. And when you enable that, you should have a map view where you can simply draw all the different waypoints and uh, they will follow the uh, parameters and options that were previously set and you can submit the uh, waypoints and the quadcopter will fly those and it may need to be in idle mode with the motor started prior to submitting the waypoints and having the quadcopter fly it and then we have the follow me mode and we also have the orbit mode that can be initiated from the app then this should enable virtual controls, but it uh, doesn't seem like it's doing it in this version of the app. And we have the auto land, auto takeoff, and the unlock of the motor icons. And here we have our photo gallery to view our photos and videos. Here's the video button, the photo button. This will split the screen so that you can put the mobile device in FPV goggles. And then right at the top, we have the map icon so you can view the map view or the FPV view. So overall a good GPS quadcopter that unfortunately does not have a great camera. The FPV range and the quality of the camera is really not that great uh, for this size and caliber of quadcopter but you can mount other types of cameras onto this drone action cameras very easily the batteries are very inexpensive and easy to find. So overall, a nice little Promark Warrior SEMA X8C uh, SJRC type quadcopter. So let's take it out for a flight and see how she performs.